Christ the Son and the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, we are gathered here today to celebrate the joining of this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable covenant that signifies the mystical union between Christ and his church. It is therefore not to be entered into it advisedly, but reverently, sincerely, and in respect for the gracious holiness of God. With this holy covenant, these two persons come now to be joined. As Sharon and Thomas give their love to each other in this joyful celebration of marriage, we remember those who are not able to be physically present. We especially remember Robert, Martha, Sue, Joseph, Ruth, Erica, Lorraine, Susie, Trudy, Stephen, and Abigail. Sharon and Thomas would like to invite everyone present to participate in their joyful union of marriage by joining their voices to the following questions and responding, we do. These two questions I now ask are, who present this woman to be married to this man? We do. We do. <laughs> and who present this man to be married to this woman? We do. We do. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thomas, will you have Sharon as your beloved wife? Will you love her, honor her, comfort and care for her in all times, keeping yourself only unto Sharon throughout your life? I do. Sharon, will you receive Thomas to be your beloved husband? Will you love him, honor him, comfort and care for him in all times, keeping yourself only unto Thomas throughout your life? I will. <laughs> Get something. Well, let me read the story. 
The same day some Sadducees, who say there is no resurrection, came to him with a question. Teacher, they said, Moses told us that if a man dies without having children, his brother must marry the widow and have children for him. Now there were seven brothers among us. The person married and died, and since he had no children, he left his wife to his brother. The same thing happened to the second and the third right down to the seventh. Now then, he said, at the resurrection, whose wife will she be of the seven, since all of them were married to her? And Jesus replied, You are in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels of heaven. But about the resurrection of the dead, you have not read what God has said to you. I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not the God of the dead, but of the living. When the crowds heard this, they were astonished at his teaching. Now the difficulty of the thoughts introduced by the Pharisees regarding marriage and eternal life was based on a natural understanding of eternal life. They tried to understand eternal life in terms of temporal experiences, what happened on the earth, you know, how a person lived and what they did and how they were married and so forth. And they thought that eternal life was merely an extension of that life that reached out into an ending time of eternity. But Jesus turned it around and he gave a different, showed a different perspective by saying, in effect, that it is not the temporal that defines the eternal. Rather, it is the eternal that, that as an example of the truth and power of the resurrection, that defines the temporal. Just as the resurrection of Christ was not for, for Christ alone after he died on the cross, but it was for us that we might know forgiveness and salvation. The resurrection is not for us when we die so much as the resurrection is about the denial of sin and death through the extension of our temporal lives into eternity. The resurrection is about living according to the eternal kingdom of God today. Temporal love does not have to be extended into eternity for it to have eternal significance. It's not a matter of how you love today that will be extended into eternity. But rather, when we live today according to the eternal love of God, our lives and our love have eternal significance today. We know that not only does God love us, but that God has an eternal purpose of love for us at this moment. Think about it. Right now, the eternal God has his eternal purpose of love for you. Right now, at this moment. Right now, the infinite eternal love of God is directed at you, through you, and around you this very moment. It is as we live each moment according to the eternal and unconditional love of God that you will know the eternal love and eternal life. For it is God's eternal love that fills each moment. If you try to live so that your temporal life will last forever, your love and faith and you, you will never know the fullness of love any more than if you tried to live every moment to the fullest, you would never know eternal life. However, if you live each moment according to the end of God, your love will be perfected and your life will be complete, even if it's measured only in the time of the human eye. As Jesus said, we are to live as the angels do, according to the infinite and eternal love of God. This is eternal life. This is eternal love. Let's pray. Dear Lord God, we thank you for the gifts of your love, your eternal, infinite, unconditional love. And we thank you for this great, holy privilege of celebrating your love in the uniting of Thomas and Sharon this day. We ask you, Lord, that you'll fill them with your love, with your life, with your truth, now and always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sharon and Thomas, I require and charge you both as you stand in the presence of God 
that you do now declare before your families and friends your pledges of faith to each other. Keep these vows. Be steadfast in doing the will of God. And may God, your Heavenly Father, bless your marriage, granting you fulfillment and a home of peace. Now as you pledge your solemn vows to one another, join your right hands and token the rub and repeat after me. <coughs> join your right hands. I, Thomas, take you, Sharon. I, Thomas, take you, Sharon. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. And these things I promise you. And these things I promise you. I will be faithful to you. I will be faithful to you. And honest with you. And honest with you. I will respect and trust. I will respect and trust. I will help care for you. I will help care for you. I will share my life with you. Share my life with you. I will dance with you. <laughs> I give my love to you. I give my love to you. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. And I will try with you. And I will try with you. To better understand ourselves. To better understand ourselves. <laughs> the world and God. The world and God. Through the best and worst. Through the best and worst. Of that which is to come. Of that of which is to come. As long as we live. Sharon, <laughs> breathe. <laughs> Repeat after me. I, Sharon, take you, Thomas. I, Sharon, take you, Thomas. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. And these things I promise you. And these things I promise you. I will be faithful to you. I will be faithful to you. And honest with you. And honest with you. I will respect and trust. I will respect and trust. I will help care for you. And I will help care for you. I will share my life with you. And share my life with you. I will dance with you. And I will dance with you. <laughs> I give my love to you. I give my love to you. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. I will forgive you as we have been forgiven. And I will try with you. And I will try with you. To better understand ourselves. To better understand ourselves. The world and God. The world and God. Through the best and worst. Through the best and worst. That which is to come. That which is to come. As long as we live. As long as we live. visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace, signifying to all the uniting of this man and this woman in holy marriage through the Church of Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us pray. Bless, O Lord, the giving of these rings, and confirm the commitments of love and faith which they signify. Even as these rings surround their fingers, so surround Thomas and Sharon with your gracious presence. Keep them in thy peace thy truth, thy love, and thy safety, filling their lives with the fruit of the Holy Spirit, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Sharon, take this, take this ring, and placing it on Thomas's ring finger, repeat after me. Thomas, I give you this ring. Thomas, I give you this ring. As a symbol of my covenant, of my and unending love for you. And unending love for you. And with all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I shall become. And all that I shall become. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Right. Take this ring and placing it on Sharon's ring. Can you repeat after me? Sharon, I give you this ring. Sharon. As a symbol of my covenant. As a symbol of my covenant. And I'm ending love to you. And I'm ending love to you. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I shall become. And all that I shall become. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Inasmuch as Thomas and Sharon have consented to live together in holy covenant of marriage, 
and have witnessed the same before God and this gathering of family and friends, and have pledged their devotion and love to each other, symbolized by their exchanging their rings and joining their hands, and having confirmed their commitment through the proclamation of the scriptures, through prayer and the witness of the Church of Jesus Christ, I pronounce that they are husband and wife together, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us now join together with Thomas and Sharon in silent prayer, thanking God for the gracious life God has this day given to us. Let us remember that it is through the grace of Jesus Christ that we are given life. The two are united together in the holy covenant of marriage and become as one. Let us pray.
special spirit Garden of Eden. Garden of Eden. I'm getting close. Oh my god, it's beautiful. I love that. That looks like um Patty made this for us. Good job. Look, one more. I have one. Sharon, baby. Yes. <laughs> Some of you people in the back can move towards the front. There's a big empty hole here, and there's all, all kinds of people in the back. They need you to come. This is the sewer. Yeah, you, you should you should be with the bride and groom. Other people can be in front. That's good. We're going to cover right here. Two empty holes in the face, too. Right. Uh, three. We're gonna take a few of these for blanket shirts now. Everybody smiling. Good. One, two, three. Now, Tom, this is really. A, I want you to really go way out of your way here. Give her a big kiss, okay? Go ahead, give her a kiss. Everybody looking at him. Everybody looking at him. Yeah, you're looking at him. You're giving a kiss. Now everybody's looking at me. You can stop kissing them. You can stop. so much. If, if we can get the bridal party and the family members, open your eyes. <laughs> She's just lost in wedded bliss over there. At least it's bliss. So far so good. Beautiful. Okay, here we go. Two, three. Okay, can I have... Yeah, she's been reminding me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that, you, you like that? Well, I just didn't want it pulled. Okay. So, it was you know what, though? It, it, yeah. yeah. It's weird. No, not One more. Two, three. Good. Silver two. Two, three. One. One more. Oops. You okay? Yeah, I just wanted to get some little closer. Oh yeah. <laughs> this is one of those days you can you can touch the bridesmaids. <laughs> in, in fact, even though I know you, I'm going to do one more like this, and then one more, and then, okay. How about we bow? Very good. Okay. Um, we're set with you guys. And one a long way. Okay, here it comes. Yeah. This is for the next album cover. Winning music by the art. Take a couple for Blink Insurance, too. Um, hold on. So this is for this is for the refrigerator now. So be careful. One more. Oh, those are great. Thank you so much. Hey, Brody. Okay. Hey. Okay, everybody. Everybody, look at the boy. Look at me. Oh, he's smiling. He's happy. Everybody's happy. We're doing good. One more shot here. Good. One more. We're going. Girls gone wild. Brian's gone wild. First, we'd like to ask if the uh, bridesmaids and the groomsmen would come up and uh, join our bride and groom. Uh, beginning with uh, Donna Gaboris and Thomas's brother Richard Minor. We are here. Uh, please say hello to our group here. Uh, Barbara Monahan and our musician Silvar Cool. The minister is Reverend James Shutter. 
Uh, the bride's son, Jeffrey Donahue, and his wife, Cheryl Ford, with Sharon's grandson, Brody Ford Donahue. Uh, Thomas's son, Scott, with his wife, Becky, and his grandchildren, Riley, Gabriel, and Benjamin. Uh, the groom's daughter, Amy Minor, with Thomas's grandson, Ian Minor. And now, if you'll turn to your glasses, please give your attention to Richard Minor. He'd like to say a few words to the bride and groom. Hi, everybody. I wanted to thank you for coming. I am totally thrilled with Tom and Sharon and how they took a high school relationship and turned it in and consummated it today with a wonderful wedding ceremony. Unbelievable. I think everybody here can feel the radiation within the room of their love. You don't need to say anything, Tom, Sharon. It just, it, it just shows. Totally. And I'd really like to toast you, Sharon, and everyone here. We're a very happy couple that we're very proud of. It's one of those opportunities that you don't get to attend very often. I come from California. I wouldn't miss it for the world. You guys are great. We love you and really appreciate all you guys coming to see us. And the whole wedding team here, including Donna and, and still Barb and uh, Barbara and on down the line. Am I anybody else? Okay. It's a short team, but we're a good one. And uh, I, I just wanted to make one comment. Uh, Tom, Dick, and our sister Trudy, who is en route, uh, she had plans a year ahead. Uh, we'll be here on Tuesday, so we'll be able to uh, kind of bring her up to date at that point in time. But I just want to let you all know we're not just any typical Tom, Dick, and Harry. <laughs> uh, it's Tom, Dick, and Trudy. So, uh, we did go ahead and try to get through the name Harriet. So we could be Tom, Dick, and Harry. But mom, mom said, no dice. So that didn't work out. But in any event, Sharon was able to see through that Tom and Dick uh, were, were definitely a notch above the typical Tom, Dick, and Harry. So anyway, thanks a lot. And let's toast to Tom and Sharon at this point in time with our champagne. Well said, Richard, and now our bride and groom are going to embrace in their first dance together. First dance together.
first to get dance together in their new life. And they'd like to have the family come up and join them for this second dance. Family members, come and join the bride and groom.
I scribbled this down on a piece of paper right before I left the house, so as a maid of honor, I figured I should speak. And my heart is beating fast. Give me a second. Okay. <clears throat> One of my most favorite positive affirmations, I have positive affirmations all over my house. If anybody's been there, they've been in my bathroom, you've seen them all over. One of them is, letting go of what no longer serves you opens you up to receive the new gifts that life has waiting for you. And Sharon had the courage to listen and to feel that in her heart. And Tom was able to come in to her life and bring her incredible joy. We can either make ourselves miserable or we can make ourselves strong. The amount of work is the same. Love shouldn't hurt, it should feel really good. And the love that Tom and Sharon have is an example to every single person in this room. And I was so honored to be part of this celebration, and I can only hope that on every single one of you, including myself, someday. So I toast to my dear friend and neighbor, Sharon B.C., and I welcome Tom Minor, Sharon B.C. Minor, <laughs> to our neighborhood with Syria Lane, because that's what it is, and if any of you watch Desperate Housewives, you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Because whether we're married or single or intermissioned, uh, we are at one as a unity in our neighborhood. So cheers to the bride and And I know that Tom's brother has more that he would like to offer as well. So let's welcome Dick up here. Cheers. I just wanted to add a little bit. <clears throat> we weren't quite in the frame of mind here when we first came in the front door, but uh, one of the big benefits for me is the fact that I inherit just a great sister-in-law with Sharon now, plus her family and her friends. And we get to add that to our family tree now. And I think that's really a, a, just a super benefit. So uh, I want to say that. And also, uh, I just wanted to add that uh, uh, Tom and Dick's dad, <clears throat> uh, Bob, who's in Sunnyvale, California, he's 93 now, and he'd love to be here, but physically isn't possible. So he still has a sense of humor. He's very, very happy, and uh, it's just great to really see him. He, uh, his sense of humor has kind of rubbed off on Tom and I a little bit, and uh, one, of his, one of his favorite slogans was... Uh, Tom and Sharon, are you ready for your honeymoon salad? <laughs> and basically what a honeymoon salad is, is lettuce alone, no dressing. <laughs> I, have, I have a chart here for, for Sharon and Tom that they can wear. It says, Tom and Sharon, new, new testing on honeymoon salad, 6, 18, 11. <laughs> Let us alone, no dress. It's not going to be seven days. You're going to make sure it's not seven days because you know what seven days makes one week.
Oh, my God.